united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. morning and welcome to United in Christ. Uh, my name is Pastor Bobby Garcia. I will be your host for just today. Amen. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor Heimer for giving us his spot today and it's a very important reason as to uh, why this took place. Uh, he'll be back next week uh, but we're here with a very special guest today. But before we, we do that, uh, we want to thank the station and all the staff and especially uh, Grace Randall who heads up the station here because she is always open to just bringing wonderful things to you, uh, the, the, the television audience. You guys are always, always, always getting good stuff from Channel 38 and it's because you got a lady here and a staff that love the Lord and, 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 and they see the importance of bringing just uh, real great things, amen, uh, through these cameras. And, and for today, uh, we have a, a, a very special visitor, praise God, for him. Uh, I've gotten to spend the whole morning with him and, 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 and his assistant and, a, and another brother. And it's been really great. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to be spending time with him. Uh, just a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom a lot of Bible savvy, and well, who is it? Who's this surprise guest? Well, there I go, amen. Uh, we have with us this morning no other, none other than uh, Pastor Rafael Cruz. Who is Pastor Rafael Cruz? Pastor Rafael Cruz is the father of Senator Ted Cruz, amen. So he is here in El Paso, and we, it's a joy to have him here in the city. It's a joy to have him here in the station. We had him at church last night, and he just... He just blew the hinges off the doors, amen, and that's what it's all about, and why don't we let him say good morning today, amen. Well, good morning to the people of El Paso. It is such a blessing. It has been so great to be here uh, in El Paso, and I hope to come back soon, and I just speak blessings upon each and every one of you. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes through this TV station. Amen. Praise God. And, and please don't change the channel and don't go. Amen. We got a very, very special, important program here for you today. And let's get jump right into why we're here. We are here. Why? Uh, I, my first question that I'd like to ask Pastor Cruz, okay, why do people need to vote? <laughs> my brother, because if we don't, our children and our children's children may not have a future. Amen. The Word of God tells us in Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, people mourn. But if the righteous, the people of principle, are not voting, are not even running for office, then what is left? We have a responsibility to make sure that people of principle are elected to every position of public office because that affects every area of our lives. That even affects the liberty with which pastors can preach in a church. All of that is at stake. So we have a responsibility stewardship responsibility of the, over this great country of ours that God has blessed us with. And if we do not exercise that res, its responsibility, we may lose those freedoms. Wow. And, and, and you know, and, and that's one thing we do have here in the United States is we, you know, I'm, I know people complain left and right, but uh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think any other country in the world has the freedoms that the United States has. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, every once in a while when you see people complaining, they ought to get out of this country hmm. and go to other countries where uh, it is beyond what you can think of the level of poverty, the level of oppression 
The majority of the peoples on the world live controlled by dictators where they have no freedoms whatsoever. We are so blessed living in this great country of ours. And uh, with that great blessing comes great responsibility. Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is much required. Is required. Mm -hmm. But you know, the reason why America is such a great country, Pastor Bobby, is that this country was founded as a Christian country. When those pilgrims arrived in Plymouth, Massachusetts, 400 years ago, they stated their purpose for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. That was the foundation of America. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For no other foundation can any man lay than that which is already laid, mm. which is Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. What a glorious foundation do we have in this country. But you see, that foundation is under attack today. And the Bible tells us also in Psalms 11.3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The righteous are the people that follow the principles of the Word of God. The people that follow those Judeo-Christian principles that have made America such a great country. You know, we need to make sure that we exercise that stewardship responsibility that God has given us over this country. Proverbs 29, 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, people mourn. So what happens if the people of principle don't vote? What happens if the people of principle don't run for public office? Then the people without principles are going to govern us to our detriment. And it becomes our fault. It becomes our fault. And there's a series of excuses that the church gives for not being involved. Mm. One of them is politics is a dirty business. I don't want any part of it. Well, it is a dirty business because the people of principle are not running for office. Because people of principle, many of them are not voting. The way we change that is for the church to get involved. It is a sad state of affairs when approximately only half the people in the churches are registered to vote. And of the ones who are registered to vote, only half vote. So if we don't make our opinion part of the process, then our voice is not heard. And it becomes our fault, Brother Bobby, if we are ruled at the local or at the state or at any level by people who have principles contrary to our principles. And so it, no, go ahead, go we ahead. have a responsibility to exert that stewardship responsibility, just like you have a stewardship responsibility to your family, to your spouse, to your children, to Make sure that they are raised in the admonition of the Lord, in the, in the guide of the Lord. Because Amen. if that happens, when they are old, they will not depart from it. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Uh, and and right, right now, the, the reference you made to, to Proverbs, and, and you know, when, when the wicked rule, you know, the people are oppressed and stuff, uh, it, it brought to me something we've, kind of talked about here this morning and last night. Uh, what, what, what about all this socialism business? What, 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 what's going on there? Well, you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, Hosea 4.6 says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. It is sad and actually astonishing that statistics tell us that close to 50% of college students think that socialism is a better system than free enterprise. Free enterprise is only what has given us the greatest country, the most prosperous country on the face of the earth. But it is lack of knowledge of what socialism is. Those college students 
have a totally warped idea of what socialism is. First of all, they think, well, under socialism, everybody is equal. Everybody is equal. Everybody earns the same. Mm. Well, Brother Bobby, that concept doesn't work. Because, let's just put it personally. Let's say that you and I do the same work. And you're working 10 hours a day, and I'm working 2 hours a day, and we get paid the same. How long are you going to do that for 10 hours a day? Probably not very long. And then you say, I'm not working any more than that guy over there. So the first thing that happens in a socialistic regime is nobody works, and the economy collapses. So everybody's equal? Yeah, everybody's equally poor. It happened in Cuba. I came to the United States when I was 18 years old. Oh, that wow. was 62 years ago. You were a, a young adult. Young adult. Be 81 in two months. Wow, you don't look, at, you don't look a day over uh, 60. To glory, be the, to, uh, glory be to God. But anyway, Cuba, before Castro, had a, a great economy. We had a flourishing economy. Today... The average salary in Cuba is $30 a month, $1 a day. People are starving. Everything is rationed, and nobody has any say-so. If you dare speak one word against the government, you're put in prison for years, for years. I had an uncle that he spent 16 years in prison. His only crime was trying to leave Cuba in a boat. That was his only crime. He was trying to get out of the country in a boat. They caught him, put him in prison for 16 years. Ooh. That's the oppression of socialism. But think about it. Both of us have had teenage kids. What do those teenage kids want? They want freedom. They want the ability to do their own thing. Isn't that right? Mm hmm well, why would they want then communism or socialism? And don't be mistaken, they're the same, where they have zero decision making. Under communism or socialism, all the decisions are made by almighty government. Mm -hmm. And people become slaves of the government. Slaves of the government. And... As a matter of fact, you remember the, the novel 1984 by George Orwell? I read that when I was in high school. And George Orwell talked about a society. He actually predicted a totally communist society where Big Brother was watching you and you were even controlling what you thought. God. That's the epitome of communism. That's total control, and that's what socialism wants to exert upon everybody, and it happens everywhere socialism takes place. Why would the young people want to become slaves of the government instead of exercising their God-given freedom to achieve their greatest dreams? What, what do you think attracts the young people to socialism? Ignorance. Mm. Ignorance. Mm. They have been brainwashed by those Marxist professors, which unfortunately are across practically every university in the United States. And so, you see, it is it's something that doesn't even make rational sense. It would seem that young people would, should want to think for themselves. Why would allow themselves to be indoctrinated into a system that basically makes them nothing but slaves, slaves to the government? Though, you know, the, it sounds so good for the government to give you handouts. Hmm. But when the government gives you handouts, they make you dependent upon government. That's a definition of slavery. And that's what they do. You become dependent upon government. The first thing that happens is the dream is destroyed. Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a vision, people perish. 
That's if you right. destroy the dream, people get satisfied with mediocrity. But I'll tell you what, God does not want us to be mediocre. God wants us to excel to his glory. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, verse 23, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Whatsoever you do, do the very best you can. And you know what happens under a free enterprise society? If you do the very best you can, you are going to be promoted in life, not under socialism. Not under socialism. And since doing the best does not promote you, nobody works. That's the fallacy of socialism. <laughs> socialism has never worked. Has never worked. People are starving in socialist countries around the world. But yet, that's how a lot of them want to live. They don't know any better. Yeah, you, See, you said it. we it need is. to yeah. open their eyes. And the reality is Jesus said, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. That's talking about life to the fullest. Life to where you can not only achieve your dreams, but help your family, help your children and your grandchildren to achieve their dreams. We need a system that provides them with that opportunity. Socialism destroys that opportunity altogether. No need to dream, no need to nothing. Because There's nothing to dream about because the government is going to do the thinking for you and you become robots. You become slaves of the government. And, then, and then I guess this is like what you said earlier uh, uh, on the socialism end of it. Uh, it. It's not true that everybody lives the same because... The, the higher up you get on the echelons, the better you live. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the thing is this. The governments want everybody to be peons, everybody to be slaves, but they are all multimillionaires. Mm. Even in, uh, Fidel Castro, where everybody's starving in Cuba, Fidel Castro had over 30 houses, and mm. they lived like multimillionaires. They amass all the money because all the country is under slavery. Wow. So it's not true that they're all the same. All the people are all the same. They all starve. The government, they amass all the wealth for themselves. Mm. Mm. So, so I guess it's a get-rich get scheme for them. For them, not for you. Yeah. In yeah. other words, at your cost. it's at your cost at mm. by enslaving you. And we need to understand that. Young people, listen to me. The whole world is in front of you. You know, there was a great president in America by the name of Ronald Reagan. And mm. Ronald Reagan once said, freedom is not free. Freedom is not passed from generation to generation in our bloodstream. Every generation has to fight to protect it and preserve it. Or we may find ourselves in our later years talking to our children and our children's children about what it was like when men were free in America. Mm. You know something, Bobby? I don't want to have that conversation and neither should you. Mm. I want my children and my children's children to inherit a better America than I have enjoyed. Amen. And and I and I and I I guess to be able to do that, uh, we have to get out there and vote, and not just vote, but vote for people who believe in biblical principles. Absolutely. And, and not only believe in them, but live by them. You know, well, if you should live by them, if you believe in them, and and so therefore pastors if you're listening and uh, leaders or even folks that you can take this back to your pastors you know you you, you need to have a a civic representative in your in your church uh, you can call us at 544-7400 
and we can give you the information of how to get that training and where to go. Matter of fact, you can go down here and register downtown. They're on the third floor, I believe it is, for that. But, you know, legally, you can have uh, somebody register voters in your church. I remember uh, two years, two or three years ago, uh, we, we did it at our church. They're, they're at Grace Christian Center. My wife said, you know what, let's, let's get people registered. She got everything together. Man, it was, it was amazing. And the majority of them were young. Uh, uh, we have a small church. And, and it was, I, I don't remember the exact number, but it was between 25 and 30 people who had never registered to vote. And, 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 and what happens, Pastor Bobby, if you're not registered to vote, obviously you cannot vote. And if you cannot vote, you or your principles, your ideas will not be represented. Mm -hmm. So you want for people to represent you who believe like you do, that you may have your dreams fulfilled, you need to be out there and vote. It is imperative that every church have a voter registration program in their churches. Amen. There is nothing that prohibits you from doing this. And make sure that every person in your church is registered to vote. And then that they go and vote when it is time to vote, and every time that they have to vote, and that they vote for candidates, men and women, that uphold the Judeo-Christian principles, the biblical principles upon which this country was built. It is imperative that we do that. The opposite could be not having a future for our children no, and our terrible. grandchildren. That would be terrible. That would be a wreck. And, 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 and let me tell you something. Here, here in El Paso, uh, uh, for those of you that are watching and, 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 and listening, uh, you know, here in El Paso, uh, even if you have an English-speaking church, so to speak, since we're a town, a city of, I think we're 92 or 91 percent, you know, don't quote me on that one, but we're 90 or 92 percent Hispanic, and then everything else comes along with that. And, and so, therefore, every church has Hispanic people. What am I driving at? I'm driving at, as through the statistics and the studies that have been done, uh, the majority of Hispanics that don't vote are in the churches. That's right. And, and, and they don't vote because of this thought, politics is a dirty business. I don't mm. want any part of it. The only way you can change that is for people of principle to get involved, to be running for every public office, and to vote for those candidates that uphold those principles. It becomes our fault if we don't get involved. No. So we must vote, and we must vote for candidates that uphold those principles. More than that, find people in your church, pastors, Christian leaders, to run for public office, oh, wow. yeah. to run for city council, or school board, or mayor, or state representative of whatever position there is. Again, I'm going to repeat Proverbs 29.2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, people mourn. We need to make sure that people of principle are voting and that people of principle are elected to every position in public office. The church holds the key. Amen. So uh, just speaking in a very frank way, uh, you know, qu quit complaining about the system and let's make a difference. That's right. That's let's right. make a difference. For example, if we look at America, my brother, one of the greatest sins in America is abortion. Mm. Over since 1973, over 62 million babies have been murdered through abortion in America. Almost a million a year. Wow. My brother, as Christians, we cannot vote for a pro-abortion candidate. If we do that, we become complicit in the murder of almost a million babies a year. God says in Proverbs chapter 6, Seven things God hates. 
one of those is hands that shed innocent blood. Mm. What blood could be more innocent than that of an aborted baby? You need to vote, vote for life, vote for those principles that have made America that shining city on a hill to the glory of God. Amen. And uh, something that comes to mind uh, there, Pastor, uh, I, I guess, you know, these millions of, 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 of babies that have been aborted, it, it kind of reminds me of, 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 of the blood of Abel. Man, it, it, it's got to be crying out. Oh, it's, got, it's crying it's out to God. Out, I mean, man. can you yeah. imagine yeah. now the heart of God? Because Jeremiah 1, five. God says, before you were conceived in your mother's womb, God says, I knew you. Uh, yeah. So you know that <laughs> in, the, in, in the mother's womb is not a bunch of parasitic cells, as some people may say. It is a baby. It is a human being conceived in the image of God. Amen. Destroying the image of God. That's right. That's uh, right. That's 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 a very heavy uh, to give account for when that, when that time comes, man. Boy, we'd like to keep on going here, but unfortunately, uh, time is our enemy, so to speak, right? Uh, but uh, we have a couple of minutes left, and I'd like to give uh, Pastor Cruz uh, 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 an opportunity if if uh, pastors or groups that are out there, you'd like to have them come speak or whatever. Tonight at 6 p.m., if, if you have an opportunity, B.B.'s Hall here on the east side, uh, uh, he's going to be speaking there at 6 p.m. this afternoon, B.B.'s Hall. I don't know the exact address, but it's, it's a very known uh, hall. So it's B.B.'s Hall here on the east side. I think it's on Vista del Sol, I mean, uh, around the Yarbrough area. Look it up. Uh, he'll be speaking at 6 p.m. if you want to come on out. But just very quickly, we have one minute left. Uh, if, if anybody wants to invite you to speak or would like to have you, where can they get a hold of you? Well, they can send an email to graceforamerica at gmail.com or they can contact my schedule, BB Loyola at 214-868-8618. That is 214-868-8618. 8618 or graceforamerica at gmail.com and I'll be delighted uh, I have a burden to see America restored to those Judeo-Christian principles that have made America the greatest country in the world. To God be the glory. So let's get out there and vote. Thank you for being here. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you my brother. Praise God. Amen. 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 Amen.